Let us take a sightseeing tour, a day in ennui. I went from town to town around France looking for a place. How can we find everything in our movie in this town, transform things, but use what's there and never leave? The French Dispatch is a, a portmanteau. It's a kind of omnibus film, a collection of short stories. Set in a fictional French city. Ennui sur blasé. The city is ennui, the city isn't Paris. You know, it's sort of an imagined or am amalgamated version of different aspects of, of, of old Paris. So you can say it's France, but it's a poetic France. It's, it's created and has elements from the past or from fiction. We're working in Angoulême, which is a beautiful, classic old town. It's quintessentially French and it's architecturally, it's beautiful. It felt like it could be a period setting quite easily, that it had levels. There's something just immediately gripping about a town with staircases and, and sloped roads and all these things. Ennui rises suddenly on a Monday. When I first read this script, it was clear to me that every sentence, as I read the first 30 pages, was an entirely new set. <laughs> I immediately spoke to him and said, how, how, how do we do that? Well, it, it, I mean, it started with a, a substantial panic. You know, um, and a, a realization that that's exactly what this was, that each shot was really defining a, a new set. I like how ruthless you are. It's part of your beauty, I think. The kidnapper's lair, and we were building a whole new building, but a whole new building on kind of a mountain <laughs> in the middle of the city. Wes has kind of a great history of finding alternate studio spaces. The city of Angoulême became our sort of back lot. We took over this factory and that became a de facto like film studio in the center of town. It had a bunch of different factory bays and we sort of took them over and they were our different stages. And then we also had all of our workshops there, all of our storage there, and it became a studio. I mean, it really became an actual film studio, totally from scratch, uh, without even electricity when we walked in the door. How'd you get out there? All of the city of the town was walking with Wes. <laughs> the people of Angoulême, there's well over a thousand residents of Angoulême who are in the movie. So they became kind of our partners. We have an animated sequence in there, which was all animated in Angoulême with people who live there and study there. This movie is obviously a tribute to France because all the visual references, they're like a, a real France, but they've been a bit twisted because they went through Wes's brain. It's all from research. Even though it's a kind of confection, it's sort of invented stuff and the fantasy element to it, it is basically all from research. And how do we shape the research into our story? Whatever you're doing, that you want to do it and then try to give it as much authenticity as you can. What is this world? What fast-paced, detailed, symmetrical, you know, wonderland in this guy's head are we all being? brought on ship for to cross seas with him as our captain. It reminded me a little bit of a pop-up magazine turned into film. The look of the film, the photography, the art direction, the attention to detail of the prop, the wardrobe, the choreography between the acting and the camera. It's just very unique. It's just very Wes Anderson. He takes it to another level. 